Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Thursday, January 13th, 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. The models are in, and a huge storm is about to pummel the Midwest and the East Coast. We also have updates on an M1.8 solar flare that just fired off the northeast limb and a Honga Tonga update. But the big story, winter rain and snow wipe out the worst of the drought in California. Keep calm. It's boom time. Now let's talk about what the climate alarmists won't talk about. That in just a few months, the beginning of winter, the entire extreme drought and severe drought I'm sorry, it's extreme and exceptional drought completely eliminated from the state of California. Over 30% of the state was in red and maroon just a few months ago. And well, what a respite due to that extreme snow. And the country as a whole has recovered quite a bit. Exceptional drought is only in three states, a little spot in Nevada, central Oregon, in north central Montana. And that will potentially end as La Nina wettens the northwest. We don't know so much about Nevada, but extreme and exceptional drought, especially in the country, has recovered. Now let's move to the storm. Get ready. A major snowstorm is forecast to roar across the Midwest, South, and the East Coast. Heavy snow expected to arrive in the Midwest. Well, in just 24 hours, the storm is likely to produce major travel headaches from North Dakota down to Georgia and then back up to Maine. It's insane. The storm should bring a significant blast of winter weather to the southern U.S. as well. And as the models have been getting jiggy, well, they're starting to level out and feisty Clipper Friday. So the next few days have a very high resolution. Heavy snowfall of 6 to 12 inches still on track for southwest Minnesota. Say it ain't soda, but it's true. Uh, there's your winter storm warnings and weather advisories. A winter storm warning has been issued for where confidence is highest, six inches or greater snowfall. So, hello. It's coming to the Twin Cities. Take a look at the Jiffy. You can see how there'll be a small area mix here. But certainly, Minnesota and Iowa especially going to get pummeled by this. As well as uh, Illinois and Indiana going to be picking up some snow from the snow hole. But not all regions will pick up snow, but Illinois is going to be picking up some of the first snow. It's seen significant snow. Ho, ho. Now, Iowa's forecast for Friday's winter storm warning is spectacular, and it's pink up top there, hour by hour, hours of hours. A large swath of 9 to 12 inches through the center of the state. Des Moines is at the crosshairs, so from Fort Dodge south of Des Moines and Ottumwa, you're looking at 9 to 12 inches, 6 to 9 throughout most of the state. If you're in the Mississippi Corridor, Davenport, Quad Cities, you're going to be spared here with just one to three. It's going to be a lot of mix there. Three to six over in Omaha and Sioux City. But the center of Iowa, which has been quite dry, Iowa, is going to be, well, slightly buried in just about a foot of snow. Ho, ho. Welcome to the winter wonderland. Spaghetti freezes midair in New Hampshire. Take a look at that. That's pretty fantastic. You've probably heard of it being so hot that you can fry an egg on a sidewalk. But how about so cold you can freeze a fork in midair and some spaghetti? According to Mount Washington Observatory, someone was trying to have a meal when their pasta froze midair. With the fork suspended in air between the noodles, the observatory said it took 15 seconds for the fork to freeze into place, as seen in the photo. Chilly in the Northeast, isn't it? Shut up, Al! Get in your hole! He said, I'm making it up. Extreme cold warning issued for Thunder Bay. So not only are we looking at snow in the U.S. to the north, they're going to be freezing their buttockses off. Wind chill values could be near 40, minus 40 C for the next couple of nights in Thunder Bay. Environment Canada has issued an extreme cold warning for Thunder Bay. The government weather agency states that wind chill values near minus 40 C are expected Thursday night and Friday morning. So heads up, similar conditions are expected for many areas. And we have a lot of those warnings lined up for you right here. Extreme cold weather alert terminated for Toronto. Warning centers will remain, remain open. There's some good news. But extreme cold warnings are in place in northern Manitoba. While snow is expected in southwest corner, wind chills could make it to minus 50 in Manitoba, Environment Canada says. A period of very cold winds are expected in most of northern Manitoba Wednesday evening, which will make it feel as cold as minus 50. 
Well, that was a day old, wasn't it? Winter storm to impact the central and eastern U.S. A quick moving winter storm will dive south. And we're talking deep into the south and into the northern plains tonight, continuing through the upper Midwest and into the mid Mississippi Valley Friday night. The winter storm will impact the southeast and northeast this weekend into early next week with heavy snow, freezing rain, and ice. Strong winds will impact travel throughout these areas, and there will be multiple pileups and accidents. So drive safe. Here are your winter watches and warnings through six states. And in the pink, that's where you're going to be picking up at least six, ten, maybe more snow, especially Iowa, as this storm dumps down, turns, and comes back up the coast. So let's take a quick, fresh look at the newest models, shall we? Here is our Thursday night into Friday morning. And by midday Friday, that snow is going to be dropping down through North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, just the southwest there. And then into Iowa by midday in the evening on Friday. Friday into Saturday morning, Iowa is going to be pummeled. And that's going to continue to move down into misery, bringing some extreme misery into the northeast of misery. Up to 12, 14 inches could be seen in some places. And Illinois, it's going to be totally Illinois because on the western side of the bump there, hello, you could be picking up some heavy totals as well. Now, this storm is going to take shape and it's looking like there's going to be a little Arkansas boom with potentially a foot or more in a small area, as well as a lot of Tennessee and eastern Kentucky getting very plucky with this storm in the current model. Heavy totals in western North Carolina, like we said, Asheville, Boone, you know, where deliverance was. It's looking like western Virginia. All of West Virginia is going to be a winter wonderland, as well as most of Pennsylvania. The only places spared in the newest models are the coast. So Philly is going to just pick up an inch or so. Uh, South Jersey an inch or so, but North Jersey could be looking at six, seven, eight inches of snow. Ho, ho. Big totals in the Catskills as well as Lake Effect regions. North uh, Western Pennsylvania is going to be picking up 16. Some 16-inch pockets in uh, New Hampshire as well as uh, East Western Connecticut. Take a look at that. So interesting storm with another clipper and more storms behind it. And if this holds true, wow, Chihuahua, holy Chihuahua Mountains, picking up a foot of snow. Ho, ho. So interesting uh, system developing, and we're going to keep an eye on how it develops for you. Who knew? Seismic update, no quakes of note. Good news. We've got some major volcanic activity at Honga Tonga earlier today, and it's been reconfirmed with another volcanic ash advisory. Honga Tonga Haipei Volcano. 55,000 feet boom, and we confirmed that earlier with Himawari. Now, here's the second volcanic ash advisory. Swanosima, Swanosima, Semisapuichnoi. There it is. Honga Tonga Haipei. Another update 12 hours later, still claiming uh, the blast was at 50,000 feet. So I came over here to the southern hemisphere sectors of Himawari to get a closer look. And this is the water vapor after the eruption, and you can see that plume is still pushing off in a very a westerly direction there, but 12 hours later, and there is the boom still. So here is another water vapor look for you. Actually, this is the infrared, which is why the, the it's a little darker down below there. So this is the infrared. This is the water vapor. And Honga Tonga is right underneath of my cursor here and created this circular plume here. Here's the full color. And we're now looking the very beginning here is six hours after the eruption. There's the main plume head, and you can see it being pulled apart here. But it could still be erupting underneath here. I see another secondary circular feature there. So this is still ongoing. Holy macaroni. M1.8 solar flare. And this is coming from um, active region 2921, which just came around the sun. We were looking at that about 20 days ago, and now it made its 14-day journey away from the sun, and in just about eight, nine days, we'll be directly facing Earth. A lot of activity, at least two other large mass coronal mass ejections in the last, let's say, five days from this spot, and what's been happening is the Earth-facing quiet. This has been going on for a uh, about half a decade, maybe a little longer. And this is when we began the predictions that we are in the grand solar minimum and that we need a very spectacular event to get a flare to shoot towards Earth. But when that does, it's going to be a big one. 
and it will probably have some problems with the grid and some other things. But this candidate here has been very active, three CMEs, and now an M1.8 solar flare, probably a CME associated with that. As active region, 29, 21, turns around the limb with a boom. M1.8 boom. So we're looking at uh, this big coronal hole is now earth facing. It will pass by us. And just a day later, the coronal hole stream will reach us. And the powers that be are forecasting geomagnetic storm January 15th and 16th, low level. So heads up for that low level geomagnetic storm coming to a town near you. Now, if you're looking to bug out or a place to move, why not choose Arkansas? Arkansas will pay you $10,000 in Bitcoin to move there. And if you read the article, they'll also give you a new bike. As long as you move to the northwest region of the state and you are working um, in tech. So that's what they're doing. Northwest Arkansas is one of the fastest growing regions in the country. And they're now seeing more explosive growth in the tech sector. So Northwest Arkansas is providing remote workers with an incentive in the form of 10000 in Bitcoin and a bike to re relocate to the region. Its council said Wednesday in a statement, the efforts seek to attract tech and entrepreneur talent to the state. They want to add it to the state's growing tech talent. I never heard of such a thing. Tech talent in Arkansas. That's Bill Clinton's boyhood home, by the way. That's a bone to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. As Honga Tonga blasts 10 miles into the stratosphere and the drought is ending in California as the snow falls from the Midwest to the East, what are you doing to prepare? Well, you can subscribe to the channel. You can share this with like-minded people. You can comment below and you can be safe because we love you. And that's a boom. <laughs>